And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our third and final hour on this Wednesday, 9-11-2013. We are joined by our very special guest, Dr. John Hall, a uh, guest on Coast to Coast, uh, frequent guest on Coast to Coast. His website, satweapons.com, and a new breed of satellite terrorism in America. This is uh, Dr. John Hall's book website, and we're talking about uh, gang stalking, electronic warfare against citizens, and all that entails, and it is a deep, dark rabbit hole. And many people will say, you know, this is crazy. And, uh, Mr. Hall, I do have a, a question. How many people have you encountered that say that they are victims of this, that it turns out they're just having you know problems with them, their own minds? They're not really victims of this. You know what? Very few, because... Uh, I'll tell you a little something about schizophrenia and true delusional disorder. Um, When you're truly schizophrenic, you don't see that as an issue, really. I mean, you don't recognize it as a problem. Uh, It starts early on, uh, and it is treatable with medication. I mean, most schizophrenics get better on medication. Um, Most of the people that contact me are people that are uh, scouring the Internet looking for a reason for what's happening to them. Um, So... Uh, typically, you don't see that uh, in in the truly mentally ill. Okay, well, that's a, uh, yeah, that, that's a good answer there. Wow, uh, are, is there one particular, uh, well, Christians, for example, or political dissidents? I mean, aside from the the uh, uh, twisted love interests of you know the NSA denizens who uh, and the workers of the NSA who. Who are uh, you know misusing assets? Um, who, who do you who do you find as being the prime targets to this in terms of not the social outliers necessarily, but is there any political or any type of belief or? Um, I'm not sure if you know where I'm going with this. In other words, Christians, the Christian yeah, faith, political or affiliations, political mindset, you know, yeah, any specific mindset. Over another. Well, well, in this day and age, with the current uh, government we have, and I noticed you said Christians or political um, disobedience. You know, and I think right now they're roping us into into one. Um, uh, certainly, there seems to be a war on Christianity in this country uh, right now. Um, no, I, it's. I would say that most of the probably most of the victims that I have dealt with are are probably. Christian, you know, you know, maybe not you know, full practicing Christians, but most of them uh, ad- admit to a belief in, in God and Jesus Christ. At least most of the victims that have contacted me. Of course, you know, I'm pretty open about my Christianity, so I, most of the victims contacted me know that, you know, going in. Now, I've been contacted by a number of people from the Middle East that are that are um, Muslim as well that are um, being victimized. Um, so it, it, they don't seem to be specifically targeting a, a particular mindset as far as spiritual or political um, belief. As, as a matter of fact, like I said, when you boil it all down, most of the victims are you know, what we would classify as relatively nobodies. Uh, even if they're not social out, outliers, they're still you know housewives, husbands, you know, and just you know people trying to trying to make it. And, and if you look historically at the people. Victimized in most of those MK Ultra studies, that was, you know, retarded kids living in homes and orphanages. It was prisoners. Uh, it was men using prostitutes. It was drug users. Um, you know, they're they're pretty cautious to use people for a lot of the hardcore experimentation that are already self discredited. Uh, and, and I have seen a number of people from the drug counterculture that have been victimized and. Uh, it's sad because uh, you know immediately when the police come to talk to them, they're going to say, "Well, have you ever used drugs?" And they say, "Well, yeah, you know, ten years ago, uh-huh. I, you know, used meth." Well, then right away they're going to say, "Oh, well, there you go. You know, this is all from the meth, uh, right. or this is all from the marijuana, or this is all from the alcohol." You know, um, you know, they they love having people like that to victimize and to experiment on because they're self discredited. Interesting. We we have a question from a good friend of the show in the Philippines listening to this live from the Philippines. Welcome, my friend. Um, He writes, please ask Dr. Hall to tell us more about the technology involved in these directed energy weapons 
used by, we'll say, the PI groups? Are they RF-based? What kind of transmitter and antenna uh, arrays would be used, uh, the power inputs? And, and why doesn't this affect others nearby? For example, you know, the neighbors uh, of someone in a condominium or um, even other family members, we'll say. Well, you know, the it can be uh, widened uh, in its scope to where it can affect a group of people, and we saw that used in the first Operation Desert Storm. Um, there was 1,500 Iraqi soldiers um, actually dismantled, disassembled their weapons, got down on their knees, and surrendered to 100 Marines. They didn't have enough slip ties to cuff them, so they uh, cuffed them to each other. Um, until they ran out of slip ties. And um, this was the first deployment of a system called S-Quad, or Silent Sound Spread Spectrum, uh, by uh, a Dr. Lowry had invented that, and they've admitted to using that in, in the first desert storm. Um, and those people, those guys heard Allah tell them to surrender in their heads. So they did. Uh, they surrendered. Um, it yeah, can be, as heard it, it, by on... CNN, or as heard on CNN, I'm sure. Yeah, not yeah. quite. Okay, I'm sorry. No, yeah, no, no. They never covered. It. Although Newsweek did eventually get around to admitting to that in an article that they did. Uh, in another case, there was a um, um, Iraqi soldier uh, mentioned a a weapon. This was a truck mounted weapon, not a satellite you know, based weapon. But um, there was a, um, a personnel carrier full of insurgents um, that, as he described was a a, um, a Humvee-based weapon attacked the truck with what looked like lightning strikes or lightning beams coming out of the, the Humvee uh, and actually shrunk a bus-sized personnel carrier down to about the size of a VMW uh, Beetle. And the bodies of the insurgents had been shrunk down to approximately 18 to 20 inches in length uh, just from you know, rapidly dehydrating their bodies of any water. Uh, and, you know, the human body is mostly water. Um, immediately, crews came out and, and tried to bury the evidence, but it was dug up later and um, has actually been written about in in, a, in another book um, of kind of about this technology. So, But uh, to the answer to the question, that is where the, the EEG tracking comes into play. Um, essentially, the way this is done, from at least from our counter-surveillance of the group here, is done from behind the computer where you're actually using satellite FLIR imaging uh, tracking through the EEG, which is called remote neural monitoring, um, to isolate that person out of the crowd. And then you're looking at a, uh, a visual uh, and a um, EEG readout of that person's EEG, and you can target whatever part of the brain you want to target to get whatever type of effect you want to get using very minimal amounts of power um, I know a lot of the victim websites I've seen um, claim this is being is through wall technology or being done by neighbors. This is um, satellite and heart based. We've taken victims out onto ranches, uh, isolated in Texas, where there's no power lines, there's no cell phone towers, um, there's absolutely you know nothing that can be picked up on a uh, frequency finder. They still hear voices and they still get attacked. We've had victims travel to other countries that get attacked and still hear voices on airplanes. Um, I've taken people out on boats in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, again, where there's no cell signal uh, and no power structure uh, and are still victimized. And so that would, as, that would suggest some, something implanted then or, or, or no? Well, something implanted or, the, or you've been stalked long enough to um, get a read on your EEG. You know, the body is electric and it transmits. Um, you know, certainly in some people we have found chips. There's, um, I've had a number of people either come here for RF-based scanning to scan them for chips or send me their MRIs uh, where they suspect they have had chips. And uh, there's been a number uh, of people that we have found chips in, but that's the minority. The majority of the people that we've scanned uh, either with radio frequency scanning or with um, MRI or X-ray imaging uh, we found nothing, um, but they're still being victimized. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of the people that uh, do demonstrate chipping uh, through ISA Act, we were actually allowed to have access to a Faraday cage uh, in Belgium, 
and we took a group of victims there, uh, a, a very elaborate Faraday cage that blocks out just about everything except extremely uh, low frequency. And you know, we used controls uh, that were there, people that actually ran the lab. And you could put a victim and a control person side by side in that chamber, and the victim would be found to be transmitting on RF scan and the control not. So, I mean, there's no question that these people are transmitting. Um, and in some cases, it may be a chip that's causing the transmission. In some cases, it may be that they're being bombarded with an exciter frequency that's making them transmit. And, you know, then you're getting into the, the other types of tracking um, technology like DNA resonance um, is one of the big ones now. And I know Roger Tulsis uh, talks a lot about that. And, and that would explain some of the uh, people that were doing imaging on, um, medical imaging on, and not finding chips, um, but still seem to be getting victimized. And the other way, of course, is remote neural monitoring where, um, a elf wave field can be put down around the individual uh, and can actually bombard the brain with two dissimilar frequencies. And when you do this, the brain actually spits out a transmitted um, um, interference frequency that you can derive the EEG back out of uh, to use for targeting. And mm. that's old technology, actually, Doug. That um, that technology was first patented by Dr. Robert Malik in 1974. And really? I spoke to a, I spoke to a friend of mine that was a NASA engineer on the Apollo projects, and they actually had a a similar um, technology uh, on the Apollo projects. They called it the Bone Phone at that time. And um, interesting story: one of the early astronauts, and I won't say who, actually had claustrophobia, uh, which, of course, being in that small Apollo capsule with claustrophobia is very difficult. So what they did is they invented this thing they called the bone phone, and it was mounted in the Apollo capsule. And they would monitor his heart rate remotely down at this, you know, in Houston. And when his heart rate would elevate and he looked like he was starting to get anxiety from being cooped up, they would put subliminal messages through his skull using bone conduction and RF technology to try to calm him down as they gave him little idol. They put some extra buttons on the console and dials that really did nothing, and they would have him fiddle with some of these dials and and buttons that actually didn't do anything to give him something to do uh, and subliminally control him to get over his claustrophobia. Holy cow. Folks, think about that. Wow. Yeah, that's... that's, um... A bit much, you'd think, but uh, one question I do have, Doctor, with all the increase in frequencies that are flying around our world from satellites, from cell phones, we'll say not even uh, intended co- intended consequences, does this leave one more vulnerable or has this broke down a part of our uh, the way we work through and uh, frequencies work through us for this to be uh, able to be happening at a much higher rate to people that would be victims of this? Um. That I, I wouldn't be so sure about. I mean, these are very specific frequencies, uh, and they're ELF and um, and sometimes or probably all the time scalar waves. Um, but I will tell you this: the the amount of uh, RF energy uh, and non-ionizing electromagnetic energy radiation that we have in the environment right now, there's a lot of theories that that might be the reason for the exponential rise in type two diabetes we're seeing. Uh, and from a medical aspect, really? you know that's a that's a big deal. I mean, the the number of type two diabetics diagnosed in this country uh, has exponentially increased each year for the last five or ten years. Uh, and there's been a, several really good studies come out showing that um, that chronic electromagnetic exposure actually can do that. Because you know it used to be a type two diabetic usually it was caused by obesity and poor eating habits. We're seeing as many people coming in now that are thin as rails having type 2 diabetes as we are the obese. Um, you know, the, the pharmaceutical in- industry, the metformin and glucophage and other oral hypoglycemic agents that you see advertised on TV all the time, the, their use is, is almost as rampant as antidepressants now. And, uh, you know, yeah, I, I, our, our diets have changed somewhat. But not so much in the last ten years that we've that we've seen this ramp up in type two diabetes. So I think there there definitely is a, um, um, a um, 
correlation to electromagnetics and type 2 diabetes, and there's a correlation to um, the lack of vitamin D3 that we're seeing in humans. And D3 regulates heart function, brain function, and sugar metabolism. And even the CDC has said that the lack of D3 in human beings now is at an emergency level. And you know, D3 uh, is produced by your skin uh, with sunlight exposure. And right. they're recommending that we check everyone. And most of the people we're checking, even men that work outside in the oil fields here in Texas with chronic sun exposure, are coming in with levels of zero D3 in their system. Um, and, you know, having neuropathy, having that type that 2 diabetes. How possible? Um, if you have exposure to the sun, is it uh, the offsetting of the uh, electromagnetic frequencies or? Is that what's doing that? Uh, the no, the, the one one of the theories behind it is that part of the reason that they're spraying the atmosphere, um, some of the things that they're spraying with are aluminum salts, um, and under the guise of helping control global warming. But uh, I've seen a couple of really good lectures and and good reports written on the fact that it might actually be de- being done to make the atmosphere atmosphere more electromagnetically viable. Um, as a matter that of fact, they're sense. developing crops in the Midwest that will grow in aluminum-rich soil. As you know, aluminum's toxic to most living things. So, Well, uh, you know, uh, for all the talk that we've done about the aerial spring, that certainly makes a lot of sense to me. Um, uh, may, make it more uh, magnetic. Uh, it, wow. Okay. You know, Doug, on that, on just a brief on that, you know, uh, I don't know if you knew, but when when uh, the press re- uh, reported that um, the CDC and the CIA had experimented on prisoners in Guatemala with syphilis and gonorrhea uh, like they did in Tuskegee, uh, just a couple of years ago, Hillary had to come out in public and apologize to the citizenry of Guatemala for us non-consensually experimenting on them. Um the outcome of that was um, Obama appointed a bioethics commission, and I spoke at that bioethics commission. Um, one of the most heart-wrenching stories I heard there, and by the way, this was four meetings, um, over a 100 people at each one of those meetings voicing complaints in the public forum of being experimented on with directed energy uh, and um, and this type of electronic harassment. But one of the guys at the meeting that I actually spoke at sat right up front in front of the board. He got there early. Uh, He was a cowboy. I think he was from Minnesota. Uh, Had a cattle ranch there. Uh, Had pictures of the plane spraying his ranch. All of his cattle died of brain tumors. His wife died of a brain tumor. He was on his third surgery for a recurrent brain tumor that they uh, told him if it came back would be non-operative and pleaded with the Bioethics Commission to get to the bottom of what they sprayed his ranch with um, since he would probably be dead um, before it came to light. So wow. for those of you who don't think that that's going on either, trust me, it is. And you can read about that, folks, at bioethics.gov. Doctor, is that right, bioethics.gov, the yeah. presidential commission? Okay. And, and, and which you dis- were a speaker of. And despite having four meetings with over 100 people voicing these complaints and me pointing out to them the um the limits of the common rule the common rule is what governs uh what experiments can be carried out on the public you know consensually uh i pointed out the the pitfalls of the common rule and how there really is no legislation protecting us from governmental experimentation which is why it's always been done uh on the public without consent despite the numbers of people voicing these complaints at the end of the day their report to the president was that there appeared to be no signs or, or of uh, non-consensual experimentation going on in the united states wow okay yeah. well, well now deb in alaska who's listening live writes the following qu- or has the following question here uh she's wondering if the and, and this is kind of a uh of natural progression here of this discussion, but but she's asking if the increased use of RFID chips on students and in merchandise has this contributed? I mean, where does this fit in to, to this game plan? Game plan here that we're seeing. 
Well, that has a, a it comes in uh, quite a bit. I mean, this can be done without a chip or without an RFID, but certainly having an RFID or a chip makes it a lot easier to accomplish. Uh, and they are they are, everything has an RFID on it now. As a matter of fact, they have paint now um, and tattooing where you can just paint on an RFID. Um, one of the um, the latest uh, RFID mechanisms is actually a um, a carbon fiber that um, is varied in uh, circumference and length, and when bombarded with an exciter frequency, will resonate. And depending on the which fiber you're implanted with. Uh, will resonate at your particular frequency, and it can't even be found on X-ray or imaging. It's carbon, uh, and it's about the size of a human hair. Um, My and that's goodness, a, a Taiwanese maker out. Yeah, and um, uh, so it, that has a large, large component of it because, you know, like you said, part of the Obamacare was chipping, um, and that to them they thought was going to be an easy sell. If you're on Obamacare, we want you to have a chip to have all your medical health, health information on. Uh, it would be a you know no way out of it for you if you were going to take part in uh, Obamacare. Well, when they saw that there was such an uprising against chipping, you know, in the Christian population, well, then they really had to kind of start looking for another way, and that way is going to be you know some type of invisible RFID, which is going to be an invisible RFID paint, or it's going to be a nanotechnological RFID that can be sprayed over the public and uh, embed itself into you when you breathe it in or when you ingest it. Mm. Okay. And that exists wow. already too. It's actually called smart dust, um, and they've already been experimenting with smart dust, and they can spray it over a, uh, a geographic region um, and then monitor it via satellite. And right now, they're experimenting with it, using it to track population movement to see, you know, who's moving where, and um, you know, it's it's it activates as it's driven upon or stepped on. So. Mm. Wow. Well, wow. Man, every answer begs more questions. But I mentioned before the break, um, celebrities seem to be um, of particular targets, perhaps. Uh, I'm not sure how to describe it. I mean, you know, we saw perhaps one of the more high-profile cases, um, the what I initially thought, and perhaps maybe this is true, I don't know, but the uh, the, the apparent lunacy um, associated with uh, Randy Quaid and his wife. Okay, now, um, and folks, you remember him in uh, the vacation movies with uh, Chevy Chase uh, as, you know, uh, the, uh, the fruity cousin. But 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 he he often complained of harassment of of a, uh, a Hollywood mafia type situation. Would Randy Quaid be uh, perhaps be be a victim of this? I mean I I don't know if you've looked into that. Uh, I, I think I might have heard you mention that, but or someone else mentioned that. But is, is this what we're talking about? Uh, would that be an example? Yeah yeah. Randy Quaid and his wife are are both victims. And and a lot of other people in Hollywood are victims, and um, you know there's a certain cabal that kind of runs the film industry uh, in Hollywood, okay. and 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 I've kind of got to delve into that a little bit since we're you know since my book is being put into a movie or turned into a movie, um, and there's a lot of control mechanism um, that goes um, in along with Hollywood. As a, as a matter of fact, as um, the Edmund Droulet is actually who wrote, uh, who uh, produced um, Madoff in America, Madoff with America, the Bernie Madoff story, uh, is working on um, um, a new breed movie. Uh, and as he pointed out to me, he said, you know, the reason it's called Hollywood, you know, the sorcerer's stick or the magician's stick is made out of holly. And, uh, you know, what you see is really not what is there. So. Mm. Yeah, and but yeah, wow. uh, the Quades. I mean, and I can't say a lot on that, but the Quades uh, are victims. Yeah, yeah, but, and it's well. Go ahead. Well, as far as another celebrity, actually, you know, you know, one of our friends, your, you know, yours and mine, um, was basically murdered because of uh, him taking part in uh, against this technology. That was Doctor Fred Bell. 
Um, and I'm sure you knew mm. Fred Bell, Dr. Fred Bell. Yes. Um, uh, he was yeah, another alumni about. from another alumni from coast to coast. Um, you know, he um, um, was kind enough to do a, a, a stint on the conspiracy theory show with Jesse Ventura. Uh, at my request, um, they did two shows that basically touched on this electronic harassment. Uh, and their producer had turned to me and said, can you yourself and can you find other credible people we can interview to do the show? So I made some calls and I talked to you know, some former CIA people and other physicians in this fight, and including Fred Bell, who had actually owned um, some electronics companies uh, and had worked on some of these projects when he was with the DOD and who was, had, had came out very much against it when he saw that it was being used on the public. Um, and he said... You know, sure. If you're going to do it, you know, I'll do it. But my his exact words, my handlers aren't going to like this. So um, they got around to doing some filming. Unfortunately, they didn't think they were going to have a second, se- a third season. So they didn't get around to filming me, but they did film him and several other people. Well, when they did get their third season, rather than uh, they're a low budget operation, rather than spend the money on coming to interview me, they put together what they already had filmed to try to throw a show together. Uh, And one of those shows included Fred Bell, who was found dead of a heart attack in his room 48 hours after being interviewed by Jesse Ventura. Uh, And, and, uh, yeah, uh, folks, by the way, uh, Dr. Bell passed away on September 25th, 2011. Uh, We're coming up on the second anniversary of his death, actually. Um, Wow. Uh, yeah, we work with uh, Jesse Ventura. I, I'm just, I mean, all of the, uh, all all of the uh, oddities associated with his death. What uh, can you say a heart attack? I mean, can the can can what what we're dealing with here? Can these turn lethal? The, the non-lethal uh, uh, aspects of this. These this, these weapons, I'll call them. Can they turn lethal? Oh yeah, um, most of the the directed energy research is actually done here in San Antonio uh, at Brook City Base. Um, and um, I, uh, prior to my book coming out, I actually had a pretty open door to a lot of their research. After the book came out, they certainly shut me off. But um, um, some of the things they were working on and and have perfected. Uh, are electromagnetic ways of interfering with the um, the electrical electrical impulses that control the heart, uh, and acoustic weapons that can um, mess with the heart. You know, the heart's a, an electromechanical pump, um, and the two ways to shut it down are to either bombard it with an equal and opposite acoustic pulse uh, to cause standstill within the muscular walls of the pump. The other way to stop the heart is to interfere with its electrical transmission. Uh, you know, it's an, an electrical impulse that travels from the atrium or the upper ventric, uh, upper chambers of the heart to the ventricles, the lower chambers that that causes that muscle to contract. Uh, and it has, you know, three nodes that allow it to uh, contract sequentially, so you actually have a, you know, rhythmical mechanical pump. And attacking either any one of those nodes of the electrical system with an electromagnetic pulse, um, the same way you use reverse electromagnetic pulse to shut off a transformer to you know, turn off and on a radio or or shut off and on a light bulb, you can also shut off and on the heart. Mm. Wow, that, that's frightening. I mean, I mean, this whole this whole uh, topic is disconcerting especially you know when you think about the randomness of this and I say randomness because it's well that's what it is and and to uh and to look at the bigger picture here uh, can this be used to control our leaders in government i mean that might sound like a really ignorant stupid and sophomore question but let's look at the usefulness of this we we've got uh, you know, 535 uh, congressmen, senators, and of course the nine Supreme Court justices, and of course the president, vice president, and so on. Uh, can this be used to control them uh, over and above harassing them, but put ideas, uh, thoughts into their mind, uh, thoughts of war? Let's go to war. Let's uh, let's go to war against Syria. This is a good idea. This is for the children. 
over and over again. Is this could this be done? Uh, yeah, it is being done. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, there was a lieutenant colonel here in Texas uh, that had been part of the uh, the fifth POG, the fifth psychological operations group out of Fort Bragg. Um, during when Obama, right after Obama took office, when there was um, kind of the threat of possibly you know tapering down the the war in Afghanistan uh, and defunding some of the war in Afghanistan, several Congress people. Uh, went to visit Afghanistan, and this lieutenant colonel's job, and he came forward and, and as a whistleblower, his job was to go over there and use this technology to sway the thoughts of the Congress people coming over there to visit to approve more money to spend in the war. Wow. So, yeah. So, I mean, your, I mean, your direct answer to that is it is being done. It's not potentially being done. It is being done. Uh, and it certainly appears to be, you know, being done to the masses uh, you know, in the public. I mean, we've, you know, we've voted in possibly the worst president we've ever had two times. So, um, with really no background to be where he's at. Um, and then you look at some yeah, of the absolutely. other, some of the other decisions being made by some of our Republican senators. Um, you know, McCain, specifically, I mean, I'll, I'll name names: McCain and and Lindsey Graham. Uh, they certainly seem to be uh, controlled. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same thing as you were saying that. You, you know, you you look at the uh, composition of our government right now, and 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 we we often it seems like all of a sudden we have some strange bedfellows, some strange political alliances that would not ordinarily be there. And, and hearing some very uh, strong statements coming from. Uh, uh, many people in power uh so yeah you know it, it makes one wonder not 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 dr hall we've got uh we're in the final 20 minute stretch of our program here what um uh, to take us where you want to go that we haven't touched on perhaps things that we haven't touched on that you really want to the people uh to, to the, we, we've got a pretty wide listening audience uh, tell people the, Anything that you want that you think we need to talk about that we haven't or that you want to reaffirm? Well, one thing I will say, if you if you feel like you're being victimized yourself or if you have a loved one that, that, that has complained to you about this and you didn't know enough about this existence of this technology uh, and thought that they were crazy, and I'm not saying mental illness doesn't exist. I'm a physician. You know, certainly schizophrenia and delusional disorder certainly exist. Um, but there are ways to differentiate it from um, being exposed to this technology. Uh, certainly, you know, get a hold of either me at my website, satweapons.com, or Freedom from Covert Surveillance and Harassment, and, and educate yourself about it because uh, it may save, um, you know, your loved one a lot of a lot of heartache. Unfortunately, the early MK Ultra studies that have led to this technology were headed up by psychiatrists. As a matter of fact, two of the psychiatrists that, that started MK Ultra were presidents of the American Psychiatric Association and the Canadian Psychiatric Association. So, um, marvelous. You know, psych- yeah. So at, at the top, uh, the psychiatric organizations they know very well that this technology exists, and it's no mistake that it mimics schizophrenia and delusional disorder so exactly. It was designed to do that. Uh, now, at the community level, um, if you know, if as a loved one um, with this um, type of harassment, if you're mandated into a psych eval by your work, or if you're a licensed person and mandated, um, the community psychiatrist largely is going to be ignorant of this technology. Um, but they're also not going to believe any research you bring in from Google um, or anything you download. Yeah. E- even though I can point to three different technologies, legitimate, patented already invented, already in use technologies that will put voices in your head. The minute you tell a psychiatrist you're having voices in your head, he's going to diagnose you according to the DSM-4, soon to be the DSM-5, which is the Diagnostic Manual for Mental Illness, uh, put you on a bunch of medications and rope you into $300 an hour visits at least once a month. Um, And the main reason for that is psychiatry is barely a form of medicine. Uh, It is a great uh, punitive um, technique uh, for people that they want to marginalize, and it's a great money maker. Uh, not to say that psychiatrists haven't done some good for some people that truly are mentally ill, but for the most part, 
uh, psychiatry and to some extent psychology has, has mostly failed us. Uh, and psychiatry at its worst is being used mostly punitively. So um, don't think for a minute that you're going to go into a psychiatrist and, and convince them that this is technological and that you're not crazy. They won't buy it for a second. Mm. Um, no. And the secondly, the, oh. you know, the big thing with this technology is you have to look at this in, in its larger scope. And you know, we've kind of slipped as a as a population, and and we've allowed ourselves to elect a bunch of immoral and unethical people to head up our government. Um, and one of the things I've, I've got a second book that's just about ready to be released. Um, uh, called Guinea Pigs, Technologies of Control. And it's not a story. It's mostly technology uh, and history and how we got here, how there there are no rules against experimentation, um, that it's perfectly, essentially perfectly legal for the government to experiment on you. And I know I'll get emails. People are going to say, well, what about the Nuremberg Code? And, you know, <laughs> th- those are suggestions. Those aren't laws, you know. Um, um we need to look at the list of people who voted in Congress against uh, um, curtailing some of the domestic spying of the NSA, and it's Republicans and Democrats alike. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, and and vote those people out. You know, people like McCain. You know, McCain is has been all behind striking Syria, which is the biggest mistake. Ninety-one percent of Americans disagree with it, uh, but the one thing that this whole Syria debacle has done. Uh, is create a diversion, so we're not talking about the, the IRS, we're not talking about the NSA, we're not talking about Benghazi, at least not in major media, uh, which was the whole point of this. He never intended on striking Syria, but it's created three weeks of nonstop, 24-7 news coverage of just that. Um, we need to get back to to putting ethical people in office when we need term limits. Uh, so no one's ever there long enough to get into a predicament where they serve 30 years in Congress and are completely corrupt. I I, I agree with that. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, uh, wait a second. Uh, John from uh, Long Island sent me a question here. Uh, please quickly ask. Well, I just did sort of quickly ask John. Uh, ask uh, Dr. Hall if television uh, has the capability of programming the mind above what is obviously known so beyond what we know you know how it uh how it uh, affects the brain waves is there something with respect to the new especially the new TVs is, is there something we should know about the new televisions for example or yeah, the new the, programming uh, yeah well that's the part that's part of the reason they went you know you can't put an antenna in your house and get a reception of anything now um Part of the reason that they basically forced everything into digital format uh, and forced everyone to either have satellite TV or cable TV um, is, yeah, it's very easy to put across digital subliminal messages um, through digital TV. And um, and it is being done, and it has been done. I mean, uh, I don't know if you remember... Um, I don't know how old you are, but if you're old enough to remember probably 20 years ago, uh, the Japanese experimented with that using TV uh, and actually put subliminal messages in one of the children's cartoons and had an outbreak of of seizures across Japan in young children and finally had to admit that they had experimented with subliminal messaging in a cartoon. Um, and that's very easy to do with digital technology. Uh, some of the the, the uh, high definition digital TVs are also being equipped with cameras. Uh, they've got new TVs that are uh, coming out now where you'll be able to interact uh, with as a phone and a TV at the same time. Um, so it's all being geared to where your house will essentially be wired. Um, for surveillance, um, and if you're using power lines, your house is already wired for surveillance. And I'm sure you probably already knew, as a private investigator with that history, that your house can actually be monitored in a, without a smart meter just through the power lines. Um, now the FBI has to have yeah. a warrant to do that, but I mean I have had long talks with some friends that are high up in our city public service. And, you know, they communicate via the power lines uh, to each other just by hooking up to the power line. Um, What a lot of people don't realize in your home wiring, that third little plug at the bottom between the two spades, 
um, everybody refers to it as a ground wire. Well, it's not truly a ground wire. It's a return wire. Um, and when you look up at the poles coming to your house, you've got two wires on top and one on the bottom. And the one on the bottom is the return. Sure, some of the dissipated electricity does go into the grounds, into the foundation. Most of it returns via the return line to the power station. Um, and sounds within the home can actually be heard through that line with the right apparatus. Exactly, with the proper apparatus. We have a, another question from a listener wanting to know uh, how much video games can affect this, um, we'll, we'll say even the from the gang stalking uh, to the electronic frequency attacks. Yeah, is that just merely a desensitization, or is that something uh, programming or something more? Well, we really, I really haven't delved much into the, the video gaming part of it. I know the media has certainly jumped on the bandwagon to, to blame violent videos for, you know, like the Sandy Hook uh, shooter. Um, you know, they came out and said, well, he was you know, playing violent video games, and that certainly could have contributed to his already existing mental illness that made him go on the rampage and, and shooting. Uh, and I, you know, I mean, I've played my share of video games, and um, and there's a lot of kids playing some awfully violent video games that, are, that don't seem to be doing that. So uh, I think that might be being used as a crutch. Uh, as an excuse uh, for maybe some kids that are being controlled a different way but happen to be actually um, delving into violent video games. And, you know, I don't know if either one of you guys are, are hunters or shooters. You know, I have have always owned firearms and have been hunting for a long time and am actually a fairly decent shooter. And I don't think I could walk into a school full of children scrambling and running around for their lives and, and get off that many accurate shots. And my gut feeling is that an inexperienced young shooter probably didn't either. So, Okay. Well, this kind of segues into a question from Katie from Naper, Naperville, a uh, new listener who, asked, who wants to ask you, the Manchurian Candidate type of, well, the movie, The Manchurian Candidate, back in the, uh, I think, what was it, 1962, uh, and compared to, we'll say, the uh, Columbine shooting or any other shoot, mass shooting event or e even to um, Sirhan Sirhan. Could, could could this have been, um, uh, impl you know, uh, their ac actions been dictated by this voice in their head that was actually uh, placed there by, by the means you're talking about? Had you asked me that 15 years ago, I would have said that sounds crazy in no way. What, knowing what I know now and, and seeing some of the unusual circumstances around those and the way the media danced around the facts, um, yeah, my gut feeling would be that um, there's probably some some control issue there. Because you got to remember, both of those shootings came right before uh, Obama and the government started really trying to push for gun control. Because uh, that's, you know, when you're trying to create a socialist environment, it's very important to disarm the citizenry, especially in this country. You know, that's the, the main reason we never got invaded on the ground by Japan during World War II is the emperor said there'd be a gun behind every blade of grass. Um, right. And our government knows that, too. Uh, like I said, you know, that shoe, that young kid at Sandy Hook, I just don't think possessed a skill to shoot moving targets as accurately as he did. Um, the kid at the movie theater, um, you know, he came to in the parking lot and didn't even know where he was. Um, and if you've noticed, you, we've heard none of his statements in the major media or even he hasn't been allowed to talk to any media people. That's uh, true. To kind, of, to kind of give his side of the story. And another interesting tidbit that you may have not known, both of their fathers were scheduled to um, uh, testify in front of the uh, Congress regarding the LIBOR scandal. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So I and I I don't think there's any you know as George says there's no such thing as coincidence. <laughs> I totally agree with you on that. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I, I've got to say that uh, uh, this uh, this author's this guest book, Doctor John Hall, his book A New Breed. Uh, this is accessible at satweapons dot com. It's well worth the investment of time of money. Uh, this will give you 
some ammunition, some information and ammunition. I cannot speak highly enough about this book and about the uh, credentials of our of our special guest tonight. You're not talking to somebody with, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're talking with somebody that knows that that, ha- that this is a medical doctor, and this is real, live information. The doctor, in closing, is there anything else that we need to 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 really drive home that maybe you haven't mentioned anywhere else on the other program or you feel in the in the waning moments of the program that you really really we need to cover kind of the explanation. Now, I I, I would say about. we just we just need to get the the best way to avoid any of this in the future and uh, in, including, you know, the gun control, the, the socialism, the electronic control. This like I said, this is a symptom of a bigger problem. Uh, and and that bigger problem is that we've we've basically let ourselves slip, and we've turned over the the controls um, of the government to people who no longer want to govern us but control us. Um, and you know, certainly this president seems to be very hip to the uh, the theories of the UN, which want to be the next Roman Empire, uh, the next one world government. Um, that's the only direction that this technology can be heading. And unfortunately, with our CIA and NSA as the strong arms of the one world government. Um wow. We we need to um you know that's and that's the the scary fact right there. Um we need to get people um that have some ethics, have some morals um back into government and and the only way to do that is to educate the public. Um you know the majority of the public reads below a 6th grade level. Uh the majority of the public doesn't watch the news which makes them uh, so susceptible to the propaganda you know, from the Democratic Party, which I, I now essentially call the, the Socialist Party. And that's sad because I, I've talked to a lot of victims um, that really thought Obama was going to be the transparent um, you know, legislator, was going to come in, was going to expose all of this, was going to do something about it. Uh, and the way I put it in my second book, if, if George Bush put the football on the tee with the Patriot Act, Obama slammed it through the the goalpost. Um, that's, a, that's a great great way of saying it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and so we're so our goal is to educate, and that's and that I would really be uh, just plea with people to go to www.newbreedmovie.com because that um, that movie is being produced solely to educate the non-victimized uh, public. It's not going to be a documentary. It is going to be uh, drama based on a uh, true story that you can go and see uh, on the big screen. Um, people tend to believe more uh, in something that might potentially be fiction than they do a documentary that's all made in fact. Um, that's just the, the human nature of the 21st century. Um, and because it, until we have everybody understanding this technology that it exists, um, the victims are going to get no relief, and more and more people are going to be victimized. So um, I really wow. would appreciate anybody going to newbreedmovie.com. Indeed, we we need to support your efforts, um, and and I suspect that you, um, well, you've got to go to work in the morning. You've got a medical practice uh, as well. That's correct. Right. That, I mean, that, yeah, very, very busy one, as a matter of fact. And that's wow. why when people email me, if I don't return your emails right away, I eventually do get to them. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I see about 20 to 30 patients a day in my medical practice. So, Wow. Well, a personal question then uh, from me. You accepting new patients? <laughs> uh, as a matter of yeah. <laughs> 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 You are, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was just. Uh, kidding, but uh, uh, no. You sound like actually, you sound like a uh, a very uh, a doctor that I certainly would be proud to have, and, and uh, uh, would trust my life in your hands based on your uh, diligence to the facts and the information, and, and your also your willingness to come out and talk about this. This is fabulous. Break, well, you know, how, how, tell you what, and and Mitch Santel does a great job for you. I'd like to give him some kudos. Um, we spoke on the oh, phone. Oh, great! Now we have to pay him more. Now, now we have to pay more. Thanks a lot. And Not you know, and you can't, and you can't say no to a, a coast to coast alum. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, we appreciate that. We, you know, one of these days, perhaps we'll uh, be on back to back or uh, uh, in, in close proximity to another. But uh, but we do hope you'll come on again, uh, Doctor Hall, uh, on our program to to give us an update um, anytime. Absolutely. Uh, you know. 
the the invitation is always open to you. And, Anytime, uh, guys. And, and I got to tell you, uh, folks, listeners, you've got to grab his book. Yes, I'm hawking books. Uh, go to satweapons.com, and grab a hold of his book, and also uh, uh, new. Uh, I'm sorry, a new, new breed. breed, new breed movie. Right, I couldn't even read my own writing here. Newbreedmovie.com. Yeah, yeah. www.newbreedmovie.com. Yeah. All right, beautiful, Doctor. Thank you so much for being gracious with your time this evening. I know you're a busy man, so we're going to cut you loose. I want to say thank you, and uh, you know, uh, let's. Uh, I'll say hello to George, uh, and, and you do the same. All right, Doug, Joe, thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, God sure. bless, sir. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Dr. John Hall. What a great, what a great interview that was. I thought loads of information and. and-